Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with breaking news out of the U.S. Capitol, where we're hearing reports that one police officer is dead and another injured after a suspect rammed into a patrol car and barricade, leading to a lockdown at the Capitol. Now we're taking a live look at the car outside the Capitol building. The Capitol is still on lockdown at this hour. Police say a driver rammed into the barricade, injuring two officers and leading to an officer involved shooting. The suspect is dead after being shot by Capitol uh, Police. Capitol FDL. Police hosted a news conference just moments ago. They say the suspect jumped out of the car holding a knife and that's when officers shot him. One officer who was injured died. Capitol Police asked people to keep the Capitol Police in their thoughts and prayers at this time. Now this is a developing story and we will bring you the latest information as soon as it becomes available. Now to a busy night for police investigating two homicides in the Bakersfield area. On only the second day of the month, these crimes have April off to a deadly start. And after seeing a record number of homicides in 2020, we are on track to beat that number of killings this year. Now, according to Bakersfield Police, it happened around 930 last night on Real Road near Saunders Park. BPD says when they arrived, they found a woman dead. During their investigation, 46-year-old Jared Oliver was arrested in connection to the suspected murder. The coroner's office will release the woman's identity at a later date. If you have any information on this case, contact BPD at 327-7111. And as we mentioned, that was one of two new homicide investigations overnight in the Bakersfield area. And just a few hours earlier, Kern County Sheriff's deputies were called to another homicide investigation. We first brought you this story as breaking news on 17 News at 11. According to the Sheriff's Department, they received a report of a shooting around 950 last night in the 300 block of Cottonwood Road near Feliz Drive. The man was seriously wounded and died on scene. No information about what led up to the shooting or who the shooter was. We'll keep you updated on both of these incidents as we learn more. And by our count, there have now been 29 homicides so far this year. That exceeds the number we saw by this time last year in 2020, a year that turned out to have the most homicides in Kern County ever, 139. With several death investigations still pending from March, we look to be on track to meet or beat last year's number of killings. And a pursuit through Northeast Bakersfield ended with a crash and a woman under arrest on suspicion of driving under the influence. Now, the pursuit came to an end here at Mount Vernon Avenue. According to Sheriff's Department, deputies tried to pull over the driver on Highway 178 just after six last night for a traffic violation. She refused to stop and got off the freeway at Mount Vernon. KCSO says the driver ran a red light and struck another vehicle. Now that driver, 29 year old Kimberly Juarez, was arrested on numerous charges, including possession of a stolen vehicle in DUI. The driver of the car that was hit was not injured. Now to a CSUB basketball player fighting for his life after being involved in a car crash in San Diego. CSUB Athletics released a statement this morning saying Ronnie Reedus, a senior on the Roadrunners men's basketball team, was in a serious car crash. It happened in his hometown of San Diego on Wednesday. Reedus remains in critical condition after suffering serious injuries. They ask for you to pray for Ronnie and his family during this time. All right, switching gears now, let's send things over to Kevin Tourette, where we are seeing a hot day once again. Nicole, it has been warm and we are looking at another warm day today. Let's take a look at yesterday first because we did break a record. Our high temperature was 89 degrees. The old record was set back in 1966 when we hit 88. Today, we may be matching a record, which is 90. As we take a look at the hour by hour here, you can see throughout the day, sunny skies will be right near 90. 78 by 8 p.m. And then for the Tehachapi area, plenty of sunshine, mid 70s, and then into the lower 60s, right around eight. What's our Easter holiday forecast look like? I've got more details on that coming your way in just a few minutes. All right, thanks for that, Kevin. Now to our local death toll from the coronavirus that continues to rise with Kern Public Health today confirming an additional 13 deaths. So far, 1,277 people have died from the virus in Kern. January continues to be our deadliest month of the pandemic with more than a quarter of all coronavirus deaths happening in that month alone. Health officials say most of the people who died over the past few months are a result of the surge we saw following Christmas and New Year's. 
Kern Public Health also announced 41 new cases this morning. New state data shows there are 63 people in the hospital with coronavirus and 14 people are in the ICU. Well, Johnson & Johnson has started testing its coronavirus vaccine in adolescents. The company says it has expanded its phase 2A trial, which began last September, to now include teens between 12 and 17. The study will evaluate the vaccine's safety at different dose levels in both a single dose and two dose regimens. It will also evaluate potential vaccine schedules at one, two and three month intervals between doses. The vaccine will first be tested in a small number of 16 and 17 year old years old before being expanded to a larger group of younger teens following a review of the data. The trial is currently enrolling participants in the United Kingdom and Spain, but will soon expand to teens in the US, Netherlands and Canada. And for those 18 and older, listen up. You can get the COVID-19 vaccine today. No appointment necessary. Clinica Sierra Vista is removing tier requirements for eligibility, which means anyone 18 years old and up can receive the vaccine. And today you don't need an appointment. CSV is offering free COVID-19 vaccinations at their Lamont and Delano locations. Folks can just walk up and receive a vaccination as opposed to our method at other locations and all the days where we're requiring an appointment. The site in Lamont will be open until 6 tonight and 8 p.m. for Delano. To schedule an appointment for any of the other days, head to clinicasierravista.org slash vaccinations. And you can sign up for a vaccine appointment using the state's website, myturn.ca.gov. You can also call 833-422-4255 to schedule your appointment. Well, taking a look around town, a local nonprofit wants to make sure Kern County residents have plenty of food on the table. The CSF Medical Nonprofit Foundation held a food giveaway this morning. The group says this giveaway is part of an effort to help battle food insecurity in Kern County. CSF has been partnering with other organizations to hold these drives. According to CSF, they continue to see the need in Kern County helping hundreds of people each drive. And today is Good Friday, which means Easter is this Sunday, and several local organizations are celebrating by giving back to the community. This morning, CityServe handed out hundreds of food boxes to local churches. Their mission is to help churches with food so they can distribute it to those who most need it in the community. Yeah, we've had a real opportunity here, especially during the pandemic, because we're connected to Farmers to Family. And so in the middle of that, today we have another 1,300 boxes coming in. This is happening right now on a weekly basis with Phase 5. And we're going out into the community through the local churches. And you can see the lineup here of churches that are just ready to pick up, taking that right back into the neighborhoods where really the greatest need is. Now, the event also held, um, offered food to families in need along with churches. Robinson says as we return to normalcy, people are continuing to feel the effects of the pandemic and holding an event like this can go a long ways. Well, another food giveaway is currently underway. Stay Focus Ministries is holding an Easter Blast drive through event today. And this is video from a previous Easter Blast event. This time around, there will be COVID-19 protocols in place. They're handing out free Easter baskets and food boxes on a first come first serve basis. Now it just started at noon and it's running until 2 p.m. at Stay Focus Ministries near the corner of California and M Street. And on Saturday, the next steps is holding a free Easter outreach event called a day at the park. That's happening from noon to 2 p.m. at Heritage Park on Bernard Street. The organization will be handing out 2000 Easter eggs, 120 goodie bags, 100 Easter baskets and raffling 10 prizes. And on Easter Sunday itself, Blessing Corner Outreach and Friends are holding an Easter giveaway. They're handing out food, Easter eggs, clothing, shoes and toys. It's a drive up and walk up event and kids must be present. You're also required to wear a mask. It's happening Sunday from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. at the Blessing Corner on Union Avenue and 1st Street. It's sure to be a hot spot for the hot summer in Virginia Beach. Now, especially for beachgoers on Four Legs. Salty Paws Ice Cream Shop is opening and it's just for furry friends in your life. Owned by Michael Griffin and his family, the Canine Treat Shop offers healthy ice cream in a variety of flavors, cookies and other treats that will even have two legged visitors sal salivating. Now, Griffin was struck with the idea to open Salty Paws after visiting a location in Maryland. 
Salty Paws starts serving up doggy goodies this weekend in Virginia Beach. And that is a reminder we are experiencing some very hot weather here. A reminder, always pay attention to your four legged friends. Make sure your animals have plenty of water because that heat really can get to them quickly. So let's send things over to Kevin Shret now who has a couple dogs of his own and has some tips. Nicole, we talked about our pets all summer long, and as we start to see these temperatures warm, I want to remind everybody, make sure if you have outdoor pets, they have plenty of water, plenty of outdoor shade. Very important as we start to see the warmer temperatures. Take you outside, look off to the east right now, and you can see we've got clear skies around Kern County. And yesterday, our high, 89 degrees. Today, we should be right around 72. Uh, we will be above that in the record of 90, set back in 1944, and that is what we're forecasting today. A little bit of cloud cover along the coastal areas earlier that will give way to sunny skies look at Lake Tahoe a few high clouds with a beautiful start to the afternoon here and high pressure in control the only change that I see comes in Sunday and into early next week a trough moves in from the north and that will bring in some cooler weather 82 today in Sacramento 89 in Fresno 70 south in LA and San Diego with Vegas at 89. The beaches becoming sunny throughout the afternoon here. 65 on the high, a south southeast wind 5 to 10. And your air quality will be moderate. AQI at 71 today. And here's a look at your forecast. Put 90 out there for Bakersfield, 88 in Delano, 87 in Taft. Light wind into the mountains, sunny skies, a southeast wind 10 to 15. 76 in Fraser Park, 76 in Tatchby, 72 in Bear Valley, and 80s into the Kern River Valley. Lake Isabel at 84. And then for the desert, sunny and hot here, 90 in Ridgecrest and 86 in Mojave. Here's your ex extended forecast tomorrow, 87, then the cool down on Sunday with the lower 80s for Easter, and then 70s, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. And then for the Kern River Valley, we're looking at 70s through Sunday, 60s return Monday through next Thursday, overnight in the 40s. And then for the Kern River Valley, we're looking at some 80s through Easter, but then those comfortable 70s return to early part of next week as well. So so again, if you're going to be out and about with these warm temperatures, sunny skies, make sure you grab the sunscreen. We'll send it back to you. We continue to follow that breaking news in Washington, D.C., where the Capitol building is still on lockdown following an attack. Police say a driver rammed into the barricade, injuring two officers and leading to an officer involved shooting. Capitol Police say the suspect jumped out of the car holding a knife, and that's when officers shot him. He died at the scene and one officer who was injured also died. We'll bring you new information as it becomes available. And Bakersfield Congressman Kevin McCarthy tweeted about the incident at the Capitol saying, please join me in prayer for the two Capitol police officers and their families. They reacted quickly and bravely, as did all the other first responders at the scene. The whole country is pulling for them right now. And Congressman David Valadeo also responding on Twitter saying, please join me in praying for the Capitol police officers, National Guard, and first responders on scene at the Capitol following a violent attack. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Now in your 17 Business Watch, job growth skyrocketed last month. The Labor Department reporting an increase of 916,000 non-farm jobs in March, with analysts crediting stronger economic growth and an aggressive vaccination effort, saying both are behind companies hiring more workers, Economists are expecting an increase of 675,000 jobs. The unemployment rate dropped to 6%. And Amazon will be opening a new delivery station in Southwest Bakersfield, creating hundreds of new jobs. Amazon announced this morning the new delivery station will open at the former Kmart building on Wilson Road. According to Amazon, the 93,000 square foot vacant building will undergo a major $20 million renovation budget. Amazon says customers can expect to receive better services when ordering packages as a result of the new delivery site. Now that delivery site will in fact employ roughly 200 people and the company is expected to begin operations by the end of the year. Well, it's been in the works for years now, but still it's not on the hook. Bass Pro Shop confirms with us that their plans for its bigger sub location have been put on hold. Slated to be built on a 100,000 square foot lot in South Bakersfield, right up Highway 99 as you enter town. The company says it's reassessing the project, but would not say if it was outright canceled. Only saying it, quote, we may well proceed with the project at a future time. 
Welcome back. It was a World Series hangover for the Dodgers on opening day after a sloppy loss yesterday. Los Angeles faced the Colorado Rockies yesterday for the first game of the season. After two errors for the Dodgers during the game, the Rockies took the win 8 to 5. All 30 MLB teams played for opening day yesterday. Now only 15 have perfect records. For the other California teams, the Angels and Padres were the only team in the state that won yesterday. The Oakland A's and San Francisco Giants also lost their first game of the season. There are now 161 games remaining in the MLB season. And it may be April, but March Madness continues and we're down to four final teams. There are two games tomorrow. The number two seed Houston will face the number one seed Baylor at 214 tomorrow afternoon. And then a game many people are excited to watch. Number 11 seed UCLA versus number one seed Gonzaga. Now the winners of each team will advance to the NCAA championship set for Monday. And after a wild March Madness so far, anything is possible. And to entertainment news, a new monster flick to get your adrenaline pumping this weekend. And whether you're staying home or excited to venture out to the newly reopened movie theaters, you can catch Godzilla vs. Kong. Our entertainment expert Rick Bentley has a sneak peek. Well, the groundwork for the epic battle between the chest beating King Kong and the super lizard Godzilla that takes place in the movie Godzilla vs. Kong started back in 2017 with Kong Skull Island. It continued to grow two years later with Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now their showdown is now finally opening. It can be seen in local theaters. Now the anticipation that was built up over the time of those years uh, this doesn't pay off with this movie. Uh, seeing Godzilla and King Kong slug it out like two heavyweights uh, produces several rounds of good action. But the action sequences get uh, to get overshadowed by a chunky screenplay produced by Eric P Pearson and Max Bornstein. Their lack of focus results in multiple storylines that barely touch a, a really weak supervillain and some sequences of extremely poor parental judgment. Now, director Adam Wingard, who you'll know from Blair Witch, bounces in and out of action sequences. The problem he faces is that the, the two previous films uh, featured big scenes of mass destruction. So his 21st century take on a city being destroyed by battling monsters is fine, but uh, there's really nothing original here. Overall, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong is entertaining if you've not set your sights too high. But it could have been better. It really should have been better. But that pesky, convoluted story just keeps getting in the way. Now, the one thing Warner Brothers has going for it is timing. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong was supposed to be opened uh, last year, but was delayed to March. Now, the theaters are reopening. Uh, you can go see the film there. Uh, but if you're a little worried about going to the movies, uh, it's also showing on HBO Max for the next 31 days. For more on this film and other entertainment options, go to Rick's Reviews at KGT.com. Finally, here at noon, Chuck Nordstrom is in with our Pet of the Week from the SPCA. Check it out. Oh, my goodness, Chuck. Tell us who this is. Well, this is Oreo, and as you can tell, he's a little chihuahua. He's about four years old, but he is definitely a tiny little one, little apple head, making ears like he's going to take flight. Uh, but a sweet, loving little guy. Oh, my goodness. He is such a sweetie. And you are correct when you say he is a little guy, right? Yes, very small. Like, I mean, he's full grown, about four pounds, four years old, um, and he's a little cuddler. I mean, this is perfect. If someone doesn't want, you know, a big dog, a lot of dog that takes a lot of maintenance, four pounds, that is easy to handle. There you go. Now, I can tell you, Oreo came from a senior home. Uh, with senior citizens, so he is kind of used to that lifestyle. So I'm not exactly sure how he would do in a family where there's kids and everything. Is he really hasn't been around that? He's been more of a lap dog, and uh, the owners did say that he did like to sit and cuddle with them. So definitely a household, you know, someone more go with the flow, kind of laid back, just wants to snuggle a lot. That's kind of what he's into, correct? Yeah, so we kind of want to find something that's very similar to what he's used to, and so he can adjust quickly. And so he can have a good, loving household as well. Now, Oreo, is he ready to go home today? 
he is ready. So uh, give us a call so we can get your application in and uh, take it from there. And that number to call at the SBCA is 323-8353. A reminder again, Oreo, four years old, very, very tiny dog, but he is looking for his forever home. Thank you so much, Chuck, for bringing him in. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You as well. We'll see you next week. All right, that's it for us here at 17 News at Noon. We have much more news ahead at 5, but stay with us. Studio 17 is next. Have a great weekend. 17 News, your local news leader continues 24 hours a day on KGET.com and our 17 News app in the spirit of the Golden Empire. 17 News. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.